On today's episode of the Locked On Texas, we celebrate a victory Monday and discuss how Houston dominated in a victory over the LA Chargers. But first. You are Locked On Texans, your daily Houston Texans podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome in, everybody. It's Cody. It's eating that dub. Crab leg. Cody won. Oh, my God. You got to know who that is. That's Cody Davis. Cody underscore. I'm sorry. Cody Davis underscore 24. I'm John. Some sports guy Hickman. And thank you for checking out today's episode. We are free and available on all major platforms. I'm super excited to talk about the Houston Texans on this Monday. In a game where Texans rookie quarterback Davis Mills final numbers and a 41-29 win over the Chargers came 21 of seven, 27, excuse me, 254 yards, two touchdowns, no interceptions, 130 passer rating. And that wasn't even the biggest story of the day. The real story of Sunday's magnificent yet surprising victory was Rex Burkhead. Uh, you know, last week I joked when he was going to take over the reins for Mark Ingram, who had been on the roster for about two months, and David Johnson struggled. And I wondered. When will he take over, if he will take over? And he did on Sunday as he ran the ball for 150 times and two tutties. And, and in that offensive performance, which I can't wait to talk about, one of Davis Mills' most impressive features, we've talked about it before, how he's getting better on third down. The Texans were 19, I'm sorry, 9 of 13 on third downs. Davis Mills was 7 of 10 on the third down conversion. So Houston dominated over the L.A. Chargers. I definitely want to give you guys some numbers. Really quick, before we talk about what we have on today's show, they ran the ball for a total of 36 times for 189 yards, their biggest output in the last couple of years. The first 100-yard rusher since Thanksgiving of last year with Rex Burkhead. Uh, Royce Freeman, a good backup. He had 12 carries for 34 yards, able to give Rex you know, a break every now and then. When I look at the receiving core, Brevin Jordan with four catches for 56 yards. Chris Conley, three catches, 60 yards, one touchdown. Philip Dorsett, before he went down with an ankle injury, uh, three catches for 55 yards. Chris Moore, four catches for 40 yards. Nico Collins, three catches for 33 yards and one touchdown. His first touchdown of his young NFL career. Let's give it up for the rookie as Houston celebrates their first back-to-back uh, winning streak of the year. And also, we got a shout out to Tavier Thomas. He's a guy that I saw a lot of people say that he was, you know, not getting the the, the uh, credit he deserved, the respect he deserves. When the Pro Bowl voting came out, they were matching his numbers with other with the other Pro Bowl cornerbacks, and he had one interception for forty eight yards, and he took it to the house. Super excited to talk about how this team dominated against the L.A. Chargers. With an MVP type of quarterback and Joe, not Joe Burrow. Joe Burrow had a, a Joe Burrow had a, a college day on Sunday. But Justin Hebert, they were without players. The Texans were without players. And last week, I called attention to why I think this would be a big game for Davis Mills. Going into this game, he was without Brandon Cooks, his number one solidified receiver, and I think that was his biggest test of the year. Even with the bad offense, even with no running game, and the running game was great. And the offensive line played well. Even with all that, he always had a security blanket in Brandon Cooks. Did not have him on Sunday, Cody's and listeners. And he shot. Spread the ball out evenly to every receiver on the field. Got the tight ends involved, receivers involved. And I think we are, you know, Cody, I'm going to go ahead and I wish I had flowers to give you. I'm not going to call him a franchise quarterback <laughs> just yet. But I will say Sunday was a game for Davis Mills. As the great Bill Coward said, oh, you can build around this young man. He said that on CBS, and I 100% agree. He just won the starting job for 2022, in my eyes. And, and I have four of them. I just don't like the other pair. <laughs> yes, sir. And look, John, listeners, viewers, when I take a look at Davis Mills, once again, he is showcasing why – he has been arguably the second best rookie quarterback in 2021. And look, John, as you have just alluded to, without Brandon Cooks, this was a big test for Davis Mills. And first and foremost, let me just say this. I hope Brandon Cooks has a speedy recovery. Hopefully, hopefully he is back 
for Sunday's game against the San Francisco 49ers because I do believe the Texans will need him in order to get that fifth victory of the 2021 hey, season. Hey, man. But, but what I would say, even though I, I the Texans and, and including myself, we did miss seeing Brandon Cooks out there on the field. This was an opportunity needed for, for Davis Mills because, John, you know me, and this is something I've been talking about going back to last year when the Texans departed from DeAndre Hopkins, and we was trying to see whether or not how good Deshaun Watson truly is. And to me personally, I think Watson got better with the departure of DeAndre Hopkins because he did not have that all-pro caliber wide receiver to throw to. The same thing could be said for Davis Mills on yesterday because he did not have his security blanket in the win against the Los Angeles Chargers because true. I'm, I'm going to give you guys this stat, this stat really quick. Going back to week two against the Cleveland Browns, Davis Mills threw the ball 18 times when he took over in the second half for Tyrod Taylor when he got hurt. Guess how many of those pass attempts went to Brandon Cooks? 10. He targeted Brandon Cooks 10 times. And without Brandon Cooks there on the field, this is a guy who had targeted eight different players in this game. And that is truly big because not only did he utilize his wide receivers like Chris Conley, we finally saw something out of Chris Conley and Nico Collins. Exactly. But he also utilized his tight ends. And John, that is something that you and I have been talking a lot about. I believe it was week six of the regular season when we was trying to figure out what in the hell and why isn't this guy utilizing his tight ends. And we saw him utilize Bourbon Jordan. We saw him utilize for Pharaoh Brown. I understand his numbers was not as good against the New England Patriots, but the fact that he completed 77% of his passes, the fact that he targeted eight different players, the fact nice. that he helped this organization get 41 points, the most points that they scored since the Texans Thanksgiving victory against the Detroit Lions last year. Th- this was Davis Mills's best performance once Coming again. Out Exactly. This was his coming out party. Exactly, John. And look, once again, I I don't want to sound like a broken record, but the fact that this guy was able to go out there and keep his composure when the game was getting a little tight, because I believe early in the... Exactly. Um, I think it was early in the third quarter or, or early in the fourth quarter. The, the Chargers cut the Texans lead down to, I believe it was six or five, somewhere along those lines. And he was able, once again, just like we saw last week, he was able to keep his composure and help the Houston Texans move the ball. I, I'm, a, I'm, I'm, I'm saying it right now, John, the listeners, I am officially a Davis Mills supporter. Embrace this guy for 2022 because now I'm excited to see what he is going to be able to do with a full offseason going into 2022 as the, without a doubt the Texans starting quarterback. Embrace this young man because the Texans, they have something special. Here's a couple of reasons why embracing him shouldn't be difficult. Last year, you won four wins with Deshaun Watson he just got you two in the last two weeks to push that number up to four on the year. So he wins uh, four games this year, and he's a rookie. He's not no all. He's not an all pro, pro bowl quarterback. He's a rookie. Number two, let's look at, and I don't think it should be him for next year, but let's look at the first game I've seen, where from quarter one through quarter four, from hmm. sixty to zero, Tim Kelly called his best game I've seen all year. Yes. It was consistent, and I'll tell you this. Right now, I mentioned that Rex Burkhead was the story, and I think he is. But look what your quarterback can do with a consistent run game, with a run game that can open up the offense and allow him to get comfortable. This is the first game I've seen all year where he's been comfortable all four all four quarters. This is the first game all year where he's been able to have a run game established in the game where, given uh, the Texans credit, they understand that the going into the game, the Chargers were not one of the best run stopping teams in the league, and they continue worse. with it. For fourth words, yes, and Rex Burkhead just had a day. I mean, if you had him in your fantasy lineup, I know you were happy. But <laughs> look at everything that went right for David Smith. Let's not look at the Colts game early in the year. Let's not look at the Bills game early in the year. Let's not look at the Patriot game that they should have won early in the year when things didn't go right 
all four quarters. It did on Sunday. That's why embracing this young man for at least one more season should be easy. And I'm going to tell you this. When I look at the Texans, they had 17 players out for Roy Lopez, Titus Howard, Lonnie Johnson, Brandon Cooks, uh, Fairbairn, who the kicker was out, Jacob Martin was out. Malik, like They had a lot of players out. And for them to go out there and get that win, put up 41 points against an offense that was missing Austin Eglin and other key pieces. But that's a great offense with Justin Herbert. For them to go out hmm. there and ball like that, how could you not think about the possibility of David Cully coming back for one more year? Now, that's a conversation that we will have on tomorrow's episode, but I think it's a fair conversation to have. And shout out to that gum he was chewing on, man. Did you see that? <laughs> yeah, that boy. I was like, what is wrong with him? He was chewing so this, hard. I got to get this win. I got to get this win. I got to get this win. He had to get a win, and he got it on Sunday. Kudos to him. And he shouted out his coordinators uh, on Sunday at the press conference as well. And I cannot wait to look at the possibility of what these guys can do. Davis Mills, I'm sorry, David Cully did say that our most complete game while praising Tim Kelly, Levy Smith, and special teams coordinator Frank Ross. This holiday season with New Year's right around the corner, grab the protein bar that tastes like a candy bar or even better than the candy bar. Built Bar, filled with so much holiday goodness, rich with decadent flavor, covered in 100% chocolate. But it's amazingly low in calorie, sugars, net carbs, and fat, high in protein. You get the best of both worlds, delicious and healthy. With New Year's right around the corner, you guys know those New Year Day resolutions are going to get popping. And you want to leave some snacks alone, want to get more to the healthier snacks. Bill Bar is where you need to go, of course. And let me tell you one thing about Bill Bar. So many different flavors for you raspberry lovers, for you mint brownie lovers, for you chocolate Double chocolate, cookies and cream lovers, peanut butter brownie. Bill Bar has everything you need. So check out Built.com. Use promo code LOCK15 and you'll get 15% off your order. Use promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at Built.com. Hey, Coach, congrats on the win. Thank um, you, Cody. Coach, can you just talk about Davis Mills' growth and his ability just to keep his composure for the second week in a row? The opposing team started to make a little run, but he was able to keep his composure and keep the offense moving. Well, he's very mature, Cody. I mean, he's a very mature guy, and, and he is getting much better and much better the more he plays. He, un Cody, he understands what his job is. And, and I think Tim and our offensive staff have done a great job of making sure that we're giving him things that he can make good, quick decisions with, that he's comfortable with. And he's growing with this time. And, and today, he did a great job of protecting the ball. I thought we had that one throw he threw to Pharaoh that went off his hands that scared me a little bit. Uh, but other than that, I thought he did a great job of handling the ball, a uh, great job of handling this offense. And, and, and that's, that's, again, Cody, that's a credit to this entire offense and allowing him, our quarterback, to do what his job is. Welcome back in, ladies and gentlemen, to this Victory Monday installment of Locked On Texans. As you guys just heard, that was an exchange that I had during David Cully's post-game press conference. I had an opportunity, as you guys heard, to talk to David Cully about Davis Mills' growth to keep his composure. And speaking of growth, John, listeners and viewers, I don't care how this season in, will end. I don't care what what you, what you can say about the 2021 season. I think we can all agree that the biggest growth for this whole entire organization has been this defense. They are now up to 16 takeaways for the 2021 season. And Was it after three are, from last year? <laughs> exactly. After three. One, two, three from last year. And John... When I take a look at this defense, once again, as you mentioned, we all know the Texans were without some very important pieces due to COVID. John Gennard, Roy Lopez, um, Lonnie Johnson Jr. And the fact that they were able to do a really solid job in maintaining the Los Angeles Chargers and Justin Herbert, especially through the first three quarters, says a lot. And what I like most about the Texans' play on Sunday was the fact that they only held the Chargers to one touchdowns through the first 
three quarters. Every time the Chargers got deep into the Texans' territory, they Play found great. a way to hold them to one, two, three field goals. Says a lot. Now I get it. They did end the game. What was it with 29 points? But majority of those points came, by the way, after the Houston Texans had already wrapped up the game. But John, once again, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Did you hear how that sounded? <laughs> The 2022 Texas wrapped up a game. Exactly. And, you know, I, and once again, you have to get kudos where kudos is due. And once again, we're sitting here talking about the great, the great coaching performance from Lovey Smith. Because I guarantee you, if we go back and we replace Lovey Smith with the former defensive coordinator and Anthony Weaver, the Houston Texans would have got ran through. In this game, especially with Justin Herbert. And by the way, he did end up throwing for over 300 and some yards. But once yeah. again, this is yeah, a defense that did a very good job holding them and keeping them out of the end zone. Yeah, and a lot of those yards, if you take take a look at it, a lot of those yards, like uh Jackson had, I want to say 98 receiving yards, because mm-hmm. he would have to check down a lot. And shout out to Heber for giving me those two tugs at the end and 300 yards. I needed that for fantasy. So <laughs> Uh, and, and Jackson, but when I look at this defense, you know, for the entire year, this defense has been causing turnovers, right? They were mm-hmm. one of the top teams in the league in creating turnovers, but what I have seen as of late, going back to last week's game and this week's game, they're just changing up a lot of things that they were doing on defense, not the same basic looks, and I think the issue may have been starting the season. Levy Smith was coming back into the NFL, dealing with a lot of players, still dealing with COVID and trying to figure out who is his best players on the roster. What are some of the things that you know you can do and get away with? What are some of the things that you may have to limit? And so in the last couple of weeks, we are seeing a lot of different coverages. We're seeing a lot of different looks. And to your point, Heber did throw over 300 yards, but the Houston Texans did a very good job of limiting what Keenan Allen was going to be able to do on the day Hmm. where they were out of, my boy, my boy Mike, Mike Thomas, Mike Williams, and without him. So they didn't really allow a lot of other guys to step up and make big plays consistently, which is something we've seen from Houston in the earlier part of this season in a couple of games uh, ago as well. So they was taking away the outside. Uh, they didn't allow any tight ends to kind of dominate in this game. And that forced Hebert to really lean on his running backs. Check down, check down, check down. Look, a lot of Alex Smith this today, just saying. And so I think that's what we need to give props to. When they were taking away something that Heber does great and making everybody else kind of play to what they wanted to do defensively, I haven't seen the Houston Texan team uh, really too much do that this year. When I look at the box score, uh, so, yeah, Jackson had eight catches for 98 yards out of the 336. Then you look at Cook, three catches for only 44 yards. Josh Palmer, five catches for 43 yards. He did have a touchdown. But Keenan Allen, one of the top 10 premier receivers in the league, and you don't mm. have Eckler. You are without Mike Williams, and you're expecting this player, who's very good, to have a, a big game to get his team over the hump. Texas only allowed him to get four catches out of six targets for 35 yards. All right. So, and look at Tavier Thomas. Look at the great job he did. Look at Desmond King, who the Chargers drafted. Those outside corners, or they're playing outside now due to circumstance. They're playing great. Justin Reed also had a pretty good game. And shout out to Simone, uh, my boy uh, Jonathan Owens. Hmm. Simone, Simone Biles, boy, he got his first <laughs> interception in his career. Uh, and Danny first fumble to recovery, and too. And first fumble. So, they were just, okay. Picking guys out the hat, you get a turnover. You get a turnover. Tavier <laughs> Thomas, you get one to take it to the house. But the CD's defensive players do their job, right? Nobody was really out of assignment too much. Everybody's doing their job and trusting the next man, which is something that Houston has had issues with this year. How many times have we seen busted coverages and on tape you're seeing the corner or maybe the safety point like this is your area? Didn't really see that much on Sunday. Kudos to, uh, to Levy Smith, man. I think he's finally comfortable mm-hmm. – Back in the NFL, and then next year you're looking at a situation or scenario where you're going into the draft with more free range to improve your defense. Maybe we're looking too far ahead, but those guys played great on Sunday. The point total of 29 doesn't really tell his story, and I think John Herbert's 336 yards does not tell his story as well. 
And by the way, before moving on, I do want to mention this, John, for the second game in a row, we're sitting here talking about the Houston Texans playing a complete game, especially on the defensive side of the ball. It's something that they have been able to do for this entire season, but it did not show because the offense were not able to sustain drives. Over the last two, three games, the offense, they have been able to sustain, to sustain drives, and this defense has looked damn good. BetOnline has you covered this holiday season with more props, guys, more eyes, and more lines than they've ever had before as the football season continues to march to the Cottage, uh, Cottage Bowl season playoffs and pro football playoffs. BetOnline remains your number one spot for all of the sports action this season. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use our promo code Locked On to receive your bonus. From basketball, football, NHL, boxing, UFC, right to your favorite Vegas casino games, don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2021 season because Bet Online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all of your favorite sports. So don't wait to take advantage of all the new amazing offers. Bet Online is where the game starts. Thanks for making the Locked On Texans your first listen every day. Be sure to check out our crossover show later in the week. Now make your second listen Locked On Bets, your daily one-stop shop for all of your gambling needs. Locked On Bets, hosted by your boy Q with expert analysis and insight from Lee Sterling. It's free and available on all platforms. Welcome back in, ladies and gentlemen, to this Victory Monday of Locked On Texans and John, listeners, viewers, before we close out today's show, we're not going to analyze nothing else, really. We just want to talk about how impressive this game was for the Houston Texans. It got and Andre Johnson to come out. Exactly. They even got Andre Johnson and 50 Cent. Don't forget Curtis Johnson. Curtis Johnson, I don't know what he's doing. He got to make these shows, man. We got shows to watch. You <laughs> can't watch some Texans, man. So maybe it was a good luck to him. Mm, maybe, but... After the game, during his post-game media availability, Justin Reed talked about how fun it was to play in this game. He mentioned that this win was one of his, one of the best wins that he ever been a part of here ever since he was drafted with the Houston Texans in 2018. And I agree with him. And I agree with him because this is what my second, third year covering this team. And I think this might, might be my one of my favorite victories to cover with this team because when you take a look at the circumstances that the Texans had, you know, throughout the week, you put 24 players on a COVID list, 18 of those 24 players remain on the COVID list out of the 18, six of those were starters. And throughout this whole entire show, we mentioned a number of the important guys who was on the COVID list. However, John and listeners, I do also want to give kudos to that offensive line. Absolutely. And Absolutely. John, you might not agree with me. Listeners and viewers, you guys might not agree with me. But I do believe that this might have been the best performance that this offensive line had. And that is saying a lot to not only the coaching that took place over this past week, but it also says a lot about how impressive this victory was because this is an offensive line that did not have Laramie Tunsil. This is an offensive line that did not have Justin Britt. And this is an offensive line that did not have Titus Howard. All three of those guys are your top three offensive linemen. And you go out there and you only commit one sack. And not only do you protect your quarterback, but you also gave Rex Burkhead and this run game enough the protection to, to, to rush for over almost 200 yards. So, in the midst of talking about Davis Mills, in the midst of talking about the receiving core, in the midst of talking about the defense, once again, kudos to this offensive line. And as David Cully put it during his post-game media availability, this is by far the most complete game that the Texans played throughout the season. Yeah, David Cully also went on as he was in the midst of praising Davis Mills. He also said that I think it starts with our offensive line in our backs, they did a great job of protection. When you can protect them and you're able to run the ball, good things happen. And good things happen on Sunday. Hmm. Um, when I think about my favorite wins, it's kind of remiss. It may be that that Buffalo playoff win since covering them. No, uh, well, that's why yeah, Justin Reed said one of his favorite victories. Yeah, right. I mean, that was that was the week before that. That's when he was called the Michael Jordan. Then he then he hit the the jump man <laughs> in the end zone. 
Uh, but, you know, I, I look at this game as a, a game that both the franchise and the fan base needed. Hmm. Right? I think that, you know, a lot of people have been getting caught up and tanking for the number one pick or the number top two picks. Or, By the way, the Houston Texans are still holding on to their third spot right now because – the Jets loss on Sunday. Or the Jets, I, th- I think it was the Jets loss or the Jags loss. Whichever one they lost on Sunday. So Houston is still sitting at uh you know number three for the NFL draft, which is good. But I look around man and, and I see the, the people are rejoicing and I and I'm I'm just happy for Texan fans because it got dark there for a while purposely mm. you know uh fire uh, fire Cully now or why is Jack used to be around you know we've heard all the storylines but they've really, um, they really deserve that win on Sunday against the, against the Chargers. And I'd also like to add that, you know, Gary Wallow played on Sunday, Nico Collins played on Sunday, Davis Mills played on Sunday. Uh, the only rookie, uh, Brevin Jordan played on Sunday. The only rookie that didn't play on Sunday from this year's draft class was Roy Lopez due to COVID. And I got to tell you, man, I'm, I'm really excited to look forward. Um, while I'm looking forward to what the possibilities of the 2022 draft can do, because you gave this guy his first pick in the third round, and it seems mm-hmm. like he hit on it, right? Maybe to be too young and too early to say the NFL does watch film and they do adjust. And speaking of watch film, remember that conversation we had last week? How will the Texas prepare with so many different players? Will they spend more time in the film room? Will they spend more time in the weight room? Will they will they take some of that time and really look at how can they grow some of these guys? Uh, the, the stress that they have. And I, I think they spend a lot of time in that film room, but give this guy a full draft, and we'll see how good this team can be next year. But I think one thing mm. that I would say for all of us to rejoice on is simple, just like this. You went from four wins last year to four wins this year. Cody, you may possibly get your fifth. You <laughs> wanted that five. If the Texans... But they ain't gonna say if the Texans. The Texans have four wins right now. They do not have Deshaun Watson playing. Mm, mm, mm. So let's let's look forward to the future and leave the past where it's at because you don't want to spin that block around. I'm telling you right now. Mm. I'm John Hickman of the Locked On Texans. Follow me on Twitter at John underscore Hickman12. Follow us on Twitter at the Locked On Texans. Like us on Facebook. Go ahead over to the YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment, and I am blessed to let you guys know that the friends of the community have chosen a family for this holiday season. Unfortunately, if you can see my shirt, I got plans on my couch because I'm on IR. I made it to the <laughs> COVID list, so I'm quarantining. But uh, whenever I'm healthy, we will be taking in family on a shopping spree for the holidays, man. Just super excited and blessed to be able to do this for a family. Hmm. Yes, sir. And as always, I'm your host, Cody Davis. Please remember to follow me on Twitter at Cody Davis underscore 24. Once again, that's Cody C-O-T-Y-D-A-V-I-S underscore 24. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, peace. Do the Texas keep David Cully for one more year? We're going to have that talk soon.